Okay, so before we even start the video, I just want to make it known that this is heavily inspired by the playthroughs Mitten Squad has done on his YouTube channel. He makes all sorts of can you beat various fallouts by doing something stupid videos. I recommend checking his channel out if you want to see them. They're super entertaining and I will link his channel in the description. This style of video is not my original idea, so I just want to give credit to the inspiration behind it. Though I did think of the gun bashing thing on my own. Also, I apologize if my voice sounds a bit congested. I've been pretty sick the past few days, but I think it's good enough now to where I can record this. So can you beat Fallout 4 by bashing your way through with a 10mm pistol? This means no shooting, no using explosives, no vats, no using melee weapons like baseball bats, knives, swords, super sledges, none of that. Only bashing with your gun. And to make things even worse, I decided to go it alone with no companion, then outlawed power armor, bayonets, and the shredder. I did that because a companion will break the rules of the playthrough by not gun bashing. Power armor is cheap, bayonetting isn't exactly bashing, and the shredder is just way too good. My special stats to start are 7 strength, which we will make 8 with the special book, 10 endurance, and 7 agility. My thought was that I wanted to do a lot of sneaking, so I wanted the ninja perk and also wanted the faster AP refill, and then also have enough strength for basher, because that perk is a must have for this kind of playthrough. So after torturing myself through the intro, I headed out of the vault with my 10mm pistol in hand. I first noticed that my console was caching textures from a mod that I had previously disabled before before starting, so I had to hard reset my Xbox. Not off to a hot start. Speaking of mods, the only mod I'm using is Full Dialogue Interface, which allows you to see everything you're about to say to someone instead of the usual half sentence. Besides that, this game is completely vanilla. I grabbed the special book in Sean's room, then instantly added that point to strength for a total of 8, then made my way over to Concord. After sneaking and bashing my way through the raiders inside the Museum of Freedom, it was time to face my first challenge, the Death Claw. I died, many times but eventually killed it by hiding behind an open door that it couldn't fit through, smacking it once, then running backwards, then repeating. Then, all of a sudden, God must have smited this thing because it straight up launched in the air like 100 feet, then died upon hitting the ground. I don't know why or how that happened, I guess the fallout gods just must have been on my side, but I'm confident my prior strategy would have worked. After escorting the Minutemen back to Sanctuary and wasting nearly two hours, the playthrough was finally about to begin. After completing the Sanctuary quest, I hammered it down to Diamond City, made a pit stop at Drumlin Diner, pistol whipped Wolfgang, then sold all of my crap to Trudy. I fought off some raiders, then saw more enemies start to pile in from an adjacent gunfight, so I just ran away. When I finally arrived at the Diamond City Gate, I helped Piper get in, then went to Arturo to sell my stuff. After I cleaned Arturo, I cleaned every other vendor of their caps, started on Lucky Valentine, then made my way out of the city. I realized I forgot about Myrna, so I went back in, bought a Wastelander's chess piece, sold her more of the minigun ammo I've been selling, and made all of my money back. On my way out, I nearly had my head blown off, but I did as any normal human would do, looted the headless dead body, and put it on the kitchen counter in front of everyone to see. With my trusty 10mm pistol in hand, and a fresh set of armor, it was time to rescue Nick Valentine. I ran to the subway station, and killed a few people inside, found a bed, got some health back, then ventured down into where the trains are. This part wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. My plan was to kill a couple, run away, find that bed again, sleep, and repeat. And that's exactly what I did. I went back down, nearly died, got lucky and leveled up which healed me, and finished what I started. Later in the quest I made a pretty stupid save mid-combat, but I was far too lazy to load a previous save so I had to deal with that. It probably took longer for me to get out of this pinch than it would have had I just loaded an older save, but whatever. I eventually escaped, fell down a hole, and camped like a Call of Duty player trying to raise my KD ratio until they were all dead. Killed Dino, then freed Nick Valentine. I didn't really have a way to stop Nick from shooting people, so I tried to jump ahead and take out who I could. But unfortunately, gun bashing is so bad it just took too long and Nick caught up and started shooting anyway. I don't think there is any way around this, but don't worry, I will dump him off when I can. Skinny Malone wasn't as bad as expected. After the second or third try, I found this door that was a good place to hide and heal up, so once I found that, it was a walk in the park. Skinny died, I followed Nick out, and completed the quest. So it was time to start hunting Kellogg. I bribed the desk lady to give me Kellogg's keys because it's the easiest way, looted his house, and somehow Dogmeat knew exactly where I was. About halfway through tracking Kellogg, we found ourselves in the middle of a Jumanji game. I was blinded by a Stingwing, Dogmeat got KO'd, but eventually we made our way out of it. Good thing I made a save right after because my game froze and I had to reset. This is reset number 2, which honestly isn't even that bad if you think about it. After loading back in, it was time to finish up with Dogmeat so I can send him back home and continue adhering to the rules. At this point, I'm thinking this playthrough isn't really all that bad. As of right now, my only real fear is having to kill Kellogg until I found my way into Fort Hagen and had to kill like 50 synths. I died more than 10 times, then finally got to Kellogg. This is where things got difficult. It took me a little while, but I figured it out. With the use of a Deathclaw Stake, Buff Out, Jet, and a Nuka Quantum, I was able to beat Kellogg down with my pistol and continue on my search for Sean. I then thought to myself that this probably should have been harder, so I switched the difficulty from normal to hard, fought Kellogg again, and beat him second try. I guess I just have it figured out. And just for good measure, I went back and did every part of the playthrough, but on hard mode, all over 
again. I re-killed the Deathclaw, but this time it was less cinematic. Unfortunately, there were no smites from above this time, but utilizing my original strategy, and after about 20 minutes, it finally died. I refought my way through the subway station, fell through the same hole, killed Skinny Malone with a broken face, and slowly, but surely, trudged my way through Fort Hagen once again. So a few hours later, we're back on track, and it was time to head to Good Neighbor. I watched a dude get stabbed, then skipped all of Kellogg's memories, which is funny because I didn't even realize you could do this until this playthrough. When it was time to head out to the Glowing Sea, I stole everything from Cleo's store while they're at that speech, and sold it back to him for a quick buck. On my way to the glowing sea, I got hit by a car somehow, which made me lose nearly all of my health, then saw a super mutant commit suicide and blow up a bunch of gunners that I had originally wanted to kill. I guess that works too. While in the glowing sea, I got gang banged by a group of rad scorpions. Luckily, I saw a deathclaw and decided to let him take them out. It didn't work, so I ran. Upon making my way to Virgil's lab, I decided to take another shot at a deathclaw, but this time there was no door for me to hide behind. This turned out to be a really dumb idea. I tried many times, but ultimately gave up. After talking to Virgil, I looted his house, then began searching for the courser. I got to the building the Courser is in, killed a few gunners, took one of their helmets, but basically just ran by everyone because they were launching rockets from every angle. It was literally impossible to kill them all. It took a pretty long time to beat the Courser down with my handgun, but with my average at best dodging in about a 10 minute fight, it was finally over. Before it was time to find the railroad, I sidetracked a bit to hijack a drug deal for a ton of chems, because with my current plan for the endgame, I will probably need them. It took a little longer than expected, I don't know why I'm surprised, bringing a gun to a gunfight and not firing it isn't exactly how you want to do things. I found the railroad, made friends, then looted everything they had because that's what friends do. Before I could build a teleporter, I had to do a Preston Garvey mission first, because helping settlements is more important than breaking into the institute. So I killed a bunch of people at the assembly plant, finally made the jump to where Jared is after like 15 tries, killed him, and got the teleporter built. Something tells me that doing this in the rain wasn't the best idea, but hey, it worked. I got into the Institute, threw in Sturge's holotape, talked to Sean, then looted as much as I could. After meeting the leaders of the Institute, I fast traveled back to the Sanctuary, gave the holotape back to Sturgis, then had to torture myself doing more Preston Garvey missions. At this point, I was really questioning my decision to go with the Minutemen, because now I have to kill the Mire Alert Queen and Sarge the Sentry Bot, with a gun I can't even shoot. For the Mire Alert Queen, my thought process here is that I will let Preston do most of the damage. I will only allow this because this is part of the quest and not a personal decision to recruit him as my companion. He did most of the work, but I would occasionally swing in on Psycho Jet to get a few swings in. As you can see here, I took the last few punches here for the victory. After the Mire Alert Queen died, I did more Preston Garvey missions and was eventually able to start old guns. Sarge was easier than expected. It just took a while because I was on Jet the entire time, but there was literally no other way I could have beat this thing. I suppose I could have just let Ronnie take him out, but I thought that was a little cheap to be doing that, so I tried to limit any combat combat help to just the Mire Alert Queen. I guess I could have also just hacked it, but I also considered that cheap as well for this playthrough, so gun bashing it was. Once Sarge blew up, I built the artillery things, then headed back to the Institute to kill Sean to start defend the castle. But of course, during my escape, my game froze, then I had to do it again. Reset number three. Defending the castle took forever. Like, I'm not even kidding when I say this, it probably took an hour and a half. This was by far the worst part of the playthrough. Of course, when we started, my defense systems went down in about 30 seconds, so after that, I would just kind of lure one or two out at a time, then just jump around and beat them to death, then try to find another and do the same thing. But it was hard because there were so many, so I was always getting triple and quadruple teamed, and it's just not possible to take out three plus of these things at once while doing this. So I did a lot of hiding, a lot of sucker punching, then just eventually worked my way down until they all died. After a painful hour and a half, the quest was finally over, and it was time to begin the nuclear option. Before it was time to infiltrate, I made use of those chems I stole earlier from that drug deal and made a ton of psycho jet. I ran by pretty much every in the sewer system, but when you get into the main room in the institute, you can't just run by people here. You actually have to take them all out to advance the quest. And the only way for me to complete this was to be on jet the entire time. So after slow motion gun bashing my way through the synths, I slow mo ran to the reactor, slow mo placed the explosives, then slow mo ran back. I decided to be a nice guy and save Robot Sean, had Sturgis warp us to the button, I engaged the switch, hit the button, and beat Fallout 4 by gun bashing with a 10mm pistol only. On hard mode, no power armor, no bayonets, no companion, no vats, and no shredder. Would I do this again? Probably not. Not that it was intensely hard or anything, even on hard mode it was actually quite manageable because you earn tons of caps from selling ammo, so you can buy more than enough stim packs, those plus the chems make it pretty doable. It was more just super annoying because gun bashing is so slow and useless, even with basher. Like like killing anything that isn't low tier literally takes like minimum two minutes and pretty much everything towards the end of the game is not low tier so it just takes forever to do anything and that just really adds up over time. Would I recommend trying this? Not unless you're looking for a challenge. Don't get me wrong, this starts out really fun, but it gets old pretty quick. At least to me. Again, I want to thank Mitten Squad for the inspiration behind this video. You can find a link to his channel in the description. So that will do it for beating Fallout 4 by gun bashing only. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to leave a like as it's the easiest way to show support. And if you're not already, be sure to subscribe for more content just like this. You know, I guess my outro doesn't really work for a video like this, because I'm not sure if I'll be doing something like this again. But I guess let me know if you want to see more of this stuff. As long as this video is seen in a positive light and we understand that I'm not the 
original creator of a video style like this, then I think we can do more of these. But as always, if you have any ideas for future videos, just let me know in the comments section. And like I always do, feature your idea in the video. See you next time. Thanks for watching.